Milwaukee puts a whole new twist into their new hex lock tap and die set. Of course, Milwaukee is going to release their new Hexlock tap and die sets integrated into the packout system. Actually, not a bad idea. And if you don't want the packout, well, you get the packout and then you just got the trays that you can use as well. Uh, we've got different model numbers for the SAE and the metric, but basically they're both 38 piece kits. Let's dive in, take a closer look, then we'll actually use it and come back and tell you what we think of it. Talk about pricing and warranty. Some brand new tools releasing today from Milwaukee are the new tap and die sets uh, in the packout system with the hex lock design. We'll go over all that here in just one moment. Obviously you see the slim packouts here. They will stack on top of one another and you can probably already tell what we have going on. Just like with wrenches and sockets, we have a red case here, a black case here, Yes, this is going to be your SAE, the red, just like their wrenches, uh, and then the black is going to be your metric. Let's go ahead and get the plastic off of this one. And there's some really cool features going on in here. It's not just a simple tap and die set. Well, it is a simple tap and die set, uh, but there's some cool features that, that Milwaukee has added that I haven't seen other manufacturers do. Um, to start, uh, I, I like the fact that it's in a pack out. I also like the fact uh, that the dies are actually standing up and not laying down. It makes it a little easier to grab. Um, each of the sizes are marked here on in the actual plastic. I believe that's that I always get it mixed up, whether that's embossed or debossed. Basically, it's raised lettering uh, for each of the sizes here in the pack out tray. So you can see the sizing there and then you can see the laser etching here on the die as well. Now, as with all laser etching over time, especially the ones you use a lot, that's probably gonna wear off, um, but it should stay, if you, if you oil it up and don't let rust get to it, should stay for several, several years. Now we'll go over all the sizes here in a moment. Each kit is a 38 piece kit. Uh, so you get the same amount of taps, the same amount of dies corresponding to one another. You also get a thread pitch gauge here. So I love to see that in a kit like this. So you can actually tell, you know, if you've got a, if you've got a bolt or if you've got a, a something with threads, you can actually use your thread pitches and they're marked there clearly. And you can tell how many threads per inch, like on the SAE and then uh, as well as on the metric side as well. Now, if you don't want this in the pack out, you can remove the insert. Not hard. Remove the tray out of here. Now you can put that in your toolbox or whatever you want, or just carry it to wherever you're working and do it that way as well. Now let's hit the model numbers really quick uh, for the set. So this set is the 49-22-5604 and the metric is the 49-22-5603. And as I mentioned, 38 piece kit. Now let's go over their hex lock design. That's one of their key features that they talk about. And it is a pretty cool feature. We basically have one handle that can handle everything that's going on in here. Um, so your taps, your dies, everything will work with the same T handle. You're not having to use different wrenches, different tool holders for different taps or different dies or even different size dies. So you have the T-handle here and it has detent bearings right here built into it. So these taps, which by the way, I believe they're one inch taps and we'll go over that here in one moment. You see it's clearly marked the start side. So we want the start side on this side and it will just push in there and it pops into place. Push it out and you're good to go. So there's no detent holes here on the side of the socket. There's no set screws on the side of the die. There's no set screws in the T-handle, just the detents built into there on three different sides. And again, just make sure you've got it on the right side and pop that in there. And now it's, it's not going anywhere. So I really like that design. No little screwdriver you're having to get to uh, tighten up a set screw. These dies are one inch dies. So you can see here on the SAE and even on the metric are the common one inch size dies. 
So again, the same handle where we're even crossing into the SAE and the metric. You don't have to worry about that either. Then let's go over the actual tool holder here for the taps. This is getting even cooler uh, and some cool technology going on in here. Now you can use this, you can use the tool holder the, or the tap holder uh, with the included T-handle and it slips in here and it's got a couple of uh, snap rings in the inside there that's actually holding that rod into place so it doesn't just slide out. At the same time, it's pretty easy to move, it just doesn't fall out free willy-nilly. So that rod goes right there in the tool holder. You can use it that way, or you can actually use this. You see the little um, recessions there because it will line up with the actual ball bearing detents in the T-handle. So now you're using the same tap holder with the die holder as a tool for actually making your threads. And it doesn't stop there. Move this out of the way. So here we have the largest size tap, which I believe is a half inch by 20. And here we have the smallest size tap, which is the uh, 4-40. Now typically, you would probably have maybe two or maybe even three different tap holders to actually handle those two types of taps or the different sizes of taps. So you can see here some knurling right here on the edge, so very easy. Now again, no tools necessary to be able to put in your taps. And you see that opens up nicely and you know, open up a little more. And I think you see where I'm going with this as far as on this larger tap. And so that holds it into place. You can lock that down, put it in your T-handle, and you're ready to start tapping threads in a hole. Now, what about that smaller tap? Well, that's cool. So let's open that up and then we'll clamp that all the way down. Uh-oh doesn't fit in there. Well, let's see something here. Let's open this up. And now we'll see that now we're holding the smaller tap. So let's see what's going on here. Pretty cool design here. Again, no tools necessary. I'm going to open this all the way up. And a couple of things. Number one, this really makes this serviceable. So there's that. And then you'll see the jaws come out of here, which be careful if you're doing this. Just kind of hold them together as they come out. They're held together by a spring and very simple spring. It's not going to go anywhere, at least if you kind of hold it in place. Two hooks on or a hook on either end that connects these two jaws together. And you can see now what's going on with these jaws is that the larger taps are gonna fit right there and the smaller taps in the same jaws fit down here in this smaller groove. So really cool design that again, you've eliminated some tools out of the kit that are not necessary anymore when you have a system like this. So you have one tool doing the same job. And as I said, now, you know, as things wear out, you can replace these jaws or you can just get, you know, a new hex lock tool holder or if you need to replace the T-handle, but even that T-handle is serviceable as well as you can see here with these plates. So really cool design here that I really like to see that takes out of the equation the need to go, oh, well, which tool do I need to hold uh, which tap? Now, something else that I just noticed that I really like to see, again, just kind of making it very simple, because most of the time, if you're buying a tap and die set, you're probably, I would assume most of the time, buying an SAE and a metric set. You may be working on things that are only metric and buy just a metric, but typically, I see people, they have their SAE and metrics. Anyway, so you see our thread pitch scale here, or thread pitch index, and here's the thread pitch index for the metric. So this is gold, this is silver. Again, keeping that nice and separate just by easily looking at them, you can tell, oh, that's my metric set, that's a gold one. So I like little things like that when Milwaukee's thinking ahead and saying, okay, let's make red one and black another, as well as even identifying the even thread pitch gauges. Now I'm not gonna go over all the sizes, maybe it will flash it up on the screen, uh, but basically the SAE is gonna go from a 
4-40 national course uh, all the way up to a half inch by 13 national course and a half inch uh, by 20 national fine. Uh, and on the metric side, you're going to go from a, uh, I believe it's an M3, yeah, an M3-.50 to a, an M12 1.5 and an M12 1.75. With that said, I do wish that Milwaukee would have added one thing, and that is kind of a uh, you know a, a drill and tap index sheet or a, a you know a drill gauge for each one of the taps. I kind of threw it on a spreadsheet here because not even on the packaging did it show which drill bits correspond to which taps. You can find those on the internet, but if you had them exactly for this kit, and and you can see. Uh, Put in the uh, drill bit number or the size when you ever look at a, a drill index especially the smaller ones you'll have a, a coinciding either a number or a letter uh, and then it gets on up to the larger size and you actually see fractional sizes but here's the drill bit number here's the decimal equivalent and then same thing on the metric side i've got the uh, metric equivalent as well as the drill bit number and then the decimal equivalent as well uh, let me know if you want that. Maybe I'll provide something, you know, in a file or something like that, and maybe a PDF of this. Um, but I do wish that Milwaukee would include that so that you know how big you drill the hole before you tap it. Because obviously, on a half-inch threaded hole, you don't drill it out to a half-inch. There would be nothing to thread. Um, I did look at doing something like where we'd put it like in the insert of the pack out, but I, I think the sizing would be too small to actually fit in there. But anyway... We'll keep working on that. Let us know if you want something like this and we'll definitely get it to you. Okay, let's tap a couple of holes here. Uh, we've actually got them pre-drilled. The first one looks like a 1024. So let's find our 1024. There we go. And again, that's gonna go, which by the way, let me touch on something else. If you're questioning on whether or not uh, or where you actually you, whether you use the outside jaws or the inside jaws on the taps, that's really easy. If the taps are on this side, so the larger ones, use the outside square here. If they're on the other side, the smaller side, that's where you're going to use the internal. A couple of them will cross over and work vice versa, but that's just easy to understand that if it's on this side, on the smaller side, then open these jaws up and you want to put them down deeper into the jaws. I turn it the right way there we go so just kind of open it slowly until it falls in there and then clamp it down and now you're ready to go and again take this pop it down in there into my handle and now it's not going anywhere and if you haven't noticed this handle it's very beefy nice and heavy um, and kind of what you'd want in a handle uh, I don't want it real light I want it to help me do some work uh, without me having to put a lot of pressure on it um, and also I like the chrome finish because that will be easy cleanup so we've got a few holes drilled here we've actually already done the 1024 so let's start with the 5 16 18 and we've got our holes pre-drilled so we'll go to uh, 5 16 18 right there and you can see we can also see it right here on the tap itself and again since i'm on the left hand side then i can actually use the larger side of the of the jaws you always want to use a little cutting fluid if nothing else at least use some uh, wd-40 but i highly recommend some good quality cutting fluid and i was caught taught kind of old school and turning a couple of threads, backing it up. And what that will do is you will get the threads cutting and then it will break off those filings into the tap. And I'll show you here in one moment. So especially thicker steel, like I'm, I believe this is 3 8 You don't wanna just drive this in You want to gently work it in and yes you're going to have to apply a little pressure but not tons of pressure and you can feel it and sometimes even hear it when it kind of clicks off and you feel those 
those pieces actually break off into the tap. There it went. And then you know when you've gotten through because it's going to be very easy. I always like to walk it past the apex there for a little bit. And the thing I really like about this too, again, I don't have to undo a set screw, just pop that off. And now I should be able to back that out by hand. You might have a little debris in your tap that gets, wants to get hung up. But other than that, it should come out nice and smooth. And so now you see all the fragments in that tap that's in the flutes of that tap. And that's what you're breaking off when you screw it in a, a turn or two and then back it out. And screw it in a turn or two, back it out. And I say a turn or two, really, you know, two quarters of a turn, if you will. Maybe a half of a full turn. Uh, but just cut it a little bit, back it off, and it will break off those little fragments into the flutes. And here's uh, the rest of the fragments that actually fell straight down from the hole. So you can see all of the little broken pieces of metal uh, from tapping that hole. That again, is pretty critical that you keep that nice and clean and in the flutes of that or either falling out while you're tapping those threads. Something else I highly recommend, take some uh, air pressure and, and blow all this out before you put it back in your tool case. I see people try to wipe this off, but these are very, very sharp and it's just gonna either tear up your towel or tear the paper towel and get it all in there. But take it over, maybe over a trash can or something, take your air hose and blow all the shrapnel out of there. And there you have it. Now it's nice and clean. And now back that off and put that back in my case. Now let's do one more. That's a 10-125. So we'll go over to the metric. And there's our 10 by 1.25. And again, it's on the left side or the bigger side of the, of the case. And by the way, I'm using my SAE, SAE jaws, which should not matter. Same ones will work on either. You can lube this up. You always want to be... Try to be nice and vertical when you start your hole. And getting started, you can get a few turns in, but then again, back it out. And you hear it snap and you'll feel it snap. You get real easy again. There we go. And so, yeah, I would say probably a half of a full turn and then back it off. And if you want to be safe, go a quarter turn and back it up. It'll take care of your taps that way and your dies and you won't be breaking them. Especially in the smaller ones, they like to break rather easily. I don't care what type of tap it is. The, this metal, the, the steel, the harder you get in steel, especially even in the tool steel, the harder you get, the more brittle you get. So the harder you get, the less flexible it is. So just understand that. Doesn't mean doesn't matter what tap and die set it is, even the, the best of the best they're still very brittle. They're not made to flex. So if you get them in crooked or you try to over torque them, they will break. They won't bend, they won't warp, they'll break. Make sure you're nice and clean. There we go. Now I know it's nice and clean. You know, take that handle off and should be able to spin it out by hand until maybe I get some of that uh, metal down there in the flutes. It might hang up a little bit. Yeah, again, Got some metal, but the, the larger you get, the more it's gonna fall out of there, it has room to, but you still, we st still have some shrapnel in there. The rest of it is falling down below. Okay, while we're here, we might as well uh, thread a rod, and I believe this is half inch, yeah, so 494. So we'll just go over here and we'll remove our tap holder, and we'll grab the half inch by 20. So we'll do a national fine. I believe that's national fine, and we got the start side. Again, recommend some cutting fluid, make a mess. And again, you want to be sure that you're starting this nice and flat. And same idea applies, get a couple of turns in, back it up, a couple more turns, back it up. Don't be afraid of the lube, that's going to keep things nice and smooth for you. Get your threads without any chatter in them. And so now we've taken this regular old steel rod and made nice, pretty, national fine half inch threads. Same thing here, make sure you go blow those uh, fragments out of that die before you stick it back in your case, or you don't have to, but I recommend it. 
Now, both of these units, the 5603 and the 5604 SAE and metric sets are each 200 bucks, $199.97. Now, what I'm not exactly sure on is whether or not these are covered under lifetime warranty. I'm pretty sure the tooling side is covered under their lifetime warranty, like the handle uh, and the die holder, but I don't believe the taps are covered under their lifetime warranty. I really didn't get uh, details on that. I'll try to do that and leave it in the description um, because we know taps are gonna break. In fact, to be completely honest, uh, I broke the 1024 when we were testing and playing around and, and uh, I got it in crooked and tried to torque a little too much and broke it. That is not a factor of Milwaukee. I would be able to tell if these were, you know, chintzy taps, they weren't hard or something like that. It wasn't that, but I did want to be absolutely honest with you and let you know I broke a tap. But as I mentioned, when you're dealing with smaller taps, if you're not being very careful, you will break those. They're very brittle. Taps in general, very hard steel and they're very brittle steel. Um, so be careful with that, no matter what you're doing. And even in the, uh, when I was actually threading this rod, if you look, the threads are actually crooked on this. You have to be absolutely sure that you're nice and flat on top. Again, that doesn't matter whether that's a Milwaukee tap, an Irwin tap, a snap-on tap, I don't care. Uh, you have to make sure that you have a nice flat surface or perpendicular surface that you're starting with and make sure that your tap is starting well. I was kind of reaching around the camera and more worried about what was on screen rather than uh, what was going on here. But like I said, if you look at that, it, the threads are kind of going pretty crooked. And once you get threads started, it's not like they're going to straighten out. That's just not going to happen. Hey, great kits here. Love the pack out integration as well, especially if you like the pack out system. And hey, listen, you can take it out if you don't want it. These should be releasing in the next few weeks. I think I saw ship date maybe the beginning of September. Also, we'll have a link in the description for these. Keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And by all means, if you hated our video, well, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.